Hey, good evening. My name is Garrett, and welcome to The Last Call. Tonight is a little bit different episode. This is a kind of a review over some tasting sets I have found more recently at my stores. During the Christmas time of the year, we see these kind of things show up on the shelves a little more prominently than what they normally do. Some of these you can find year-round without any problems, uh, but they tend to put them to the uh, front of the shelf just to kind of catch your eye a little bit more. Now, I will link above and down below an episode that I talk about the bigger boxes, so to go check that out if you haven't yet, because it's still a really good video. But I went to the store and found a whole bunch of these tasting bottles, mainly to see if they're worth your time and money and value. And so we're going to kind of break down roughly on the cost on these for depending on your area. As we all know, market price is market price, so it will vary somewhat on the full size bottles. But this will give you an idea on who these are for, are they worth your time and money, and should you go pick them up for somebody? So there was one stipulation. I wanted to kind of do some variety here and not just cover the normal things like Jack Daniels. And I wanted to make sure there was no extra frills in here, so no whiskey stones or glasses. Those kind of things are cool and nice, but for the most part, those people already have enough glasses and they'll tend to just sit on a shelf. So with that all in mind, let's get to our first tasting set. Whistle Pig Rye Whiskey Piglets. This is a tasting set. So all three bottles here are 50 milliliters. So not a big bottle to share. Uh, but the interesting thing on this one is what it includes. So this includes Whistle Pig Small Batch Rye, which is a 10 year old whiskey. Whistle Pig Piggyback, which is a six year old whiskey. And then Whistle Pig Old World Rye, which is a 12 year old whiskey. Now I was able to pick this up at Target for $24.99 and I've seen it go online for right around the same price. The hard thing about this one is their counterparts for bigger bottles on how much they cost. The Whistle Pig Piggyback, I can usually get for right around $50 to $55. The Whistle Pig Small Batch, upwards to $80 to $85, maybe even creeping towards the $90. And the Whistle Pig Old World Rye, I tend to find this at right around 110 to 125 dollars, depending. Usually right around the 15, 115 mark. So very expensive set if this person ends up liking these. Now, Whistle Pig themselves is a rye whiskey, very similar to the Lot 40 we recently talked about. This is going to give them some sweeter notes, some maple notes, a little bit of herbal notes, the earthiness. And overall, just a very different experience than what we're used to here in the United States for Rise. The question is, who is this set for? This is going to be 100% one of those bottlings that is going to be for the, I'm going to say not the whiskey expert. The whiskey expert is somebody that has a good collection already. Somebody that has been around the block with whiskeys. This person knows in and outs and getting this set is going to make them very happy because the 10 and 12 year old themselves, again, at if I bought both, that's $200 in whiskeys in two bottles if I was to buy those roughly. So to be able to enjoy all three of these, even just to try them, to see if that is something they're interested in, it's, it's a treat to those kind of people. Because at that point, they'll be able to see, yes, I like these, or that I'm happy that I didn't buy these because I would have wasted my money and I don't care for them as much. So 100%, if you have that whiskey expert in your life, this is worth it 100%. Also, your Canadian drinker, very similar to Lot 40. If they like Canadian whiskey, they're going to get to try these. Again, there's a good chance that they maybe never have had any of these because of their cost, especially in that 10 and 12 year old one. These are not cheap bottles, but to be able to try them from time to time is really cool and be able to, to experience those things, they're going to love that. And finally, your up and coming whiskey explorer. These are going to be the people that are just getting into whiskeys and they'll see these, they'll do their research on them. They'll get to know what makes Whistle Pig different from other Canadians, especially in this realm of 100% rise. And also they'll be able to do ABC comparisons. There's a good chance they may not really appreciate what this bottling offers like the expert will, but they'll at least get to try something unique and different for themselves. So on that note, next up we have Johnny Walker Discover. Now this is another tasting set coming with five bottles this time. And I was able to pick this up from Meyer here in the Midwest for $37 on sale. 
So a little bit more than the Whistle Pig version, but it comes with the two additional bottles. This is a blended Scotch whiskey and with a name that's almost as recognizable to some people as Jack Daniels. This comes with a bottle of Johnny Walker Black, Double Black, Gold Reserve, 18 year old, and Blue. And again, for $37, I think this is an interesting tasting set, especially uh, depending on the person's level of knowledge on Johnny Walker. Now, individually, usually black, I can find anywhere between $25 to $30. Sometimes up towards the $35. The double black usually goes between $30 and $40. Yes, you can find overlap in these being so close together that it's almost not funny. The gold I've seen go as low as like $54, all the way up to $80 to $90. 18 year old, which usually goes between I've seen it go as low as like 75 all the way up to 100 and Johnny Walker Blue going anywhere between 170 to 230 250 dollars a bottle. Yeah, you heard me right. Now all these the interesting thing is they're going to give you different profiles. Your black and double black are the more budget area for a Johnny Walker and tend to have more smoke and peaty and some sweeter notes. Uh, but you're going to get a little bit more nuances of those where once we get up into the gold and the 18 these are a little bit more you can tell these are a step up they're going to be a little sweeter uh the 18 i tend to get a little bit more almond in there a little nut going on and you get some more interesting vanillas and just some sweetness in there with less smoke and blue on the other hand is something that i've never tasted in a blended scotch before and a lot of people are going to look at this set and kind of snub it off because people have a disdain for Johnny Walker because it is so common and mainstream. Now, who's this set for? Well, for a couple people. A, your obvious one is your whiskey explorer. Being able to sit down and kind of taste all these at the same time and do some A-B comparisons, this allows them to really kind of get in here and see almost the full core lineup of Johnny Walker minus two bottles to really kind of get an idea on why these cost the way they do and where they land in their profiles. Again, these are going to be different than your, your Canadian or your, your Jack Daniels or your Jim Beam. Scotch is a completely different beast and some people love it. Some people hate it and that's okay. But the whiskey, uh, the person that's exploring whiskey is going to be able to sit down with these and really kind of get an idea what makes Johnny Walker, Johnny Walker. Your whiskey expert is also going to be hopefully <laughs> enjoying this as well, especially in the higher three bottles. There's a good chance that they maybe have never had blue because of its huge cost. Johnny Walker blue is not cheap. And so they probably never have tried it. Now, will that make them go out and buy a bottle? I don't know, who knows at that point, but they might be able to pick up a bottle of gold or 18 and keep it around for us, um, you know, th this that moment that comes along to celebrate. And that's 100% up to them, but this at least gives them the idea on why these are priced the way they are and make their own opinions if this is actually worth it or not for each of these kind of bottles. On that note, next up we have the Glen Morangy tasting set. Now, this is another tasting set, obviously, but comes with four bottles this time and 100 milliliter bottles. So twice the size of what we've seen so far. I ended up picking this up at Meyer here in the Midwest big box store uh, for $28. So similar to the Greenstone, this is a single Highland malt scotch. The bottles of this one includes are a 10 year old bourbon cask finish, a 12 year old sherry cask finish, a 14 year old port cask and then a sultanus cask finish which is essentially like a sweet wine and then port obviously port wine as well now bottle wise i had to make a list because there were so many different things the 10 year old tends to run in my area at about 35 ish dollars maybe upwards to 40 you're next in line the 12 tends to run me at about 50 to 55 dollars your 14, you're looking at 60 to 65, $67. And your Sultanus, your Sultanus based one is about 75 for a full bottle of all these. So 
pretty expensive set if you were to wanting to buy the full big kit and caboodle on these. Now, similar to the Grange Stone where we have different casks being used means that this was just put into these barrels for upwards to six months usually to draw out some different flavors. Uh, your more interesting ones being the port cask are going to give you things like honeysuckle and dark chocolate where your sultanus based one is going to bring out sweeter notes like lemon and, and things like that. So again, a very interesting concept and a good one to really kind of explore. Now, who is this set for? This is going to be for your intermediate to expert whiskey explorer. Uh, your, your introduction people would still probably like this, but your intermediate to experts are going to know this brand a little bit more and still probably not have tried this, especially in the intermediate areas. Being able to try all these different casks uh, is fun and they can again see, wow, I really like that bourbon cask. I really thought that that sherry cask had a great taste on it. And they'll be able to pick and choose and have some fun with it, especially being 100 milliliter bottles. They could do this with a friend even. And then your single malt scotch drinker slash blended scotch drinker. There's a good chance your single malt scotch drinkers might have had the 10 at this point and maybe even the 12. The 14 is going to be a little bit higher in price and they may, may not have had that one. So if they are into the scotch realm, this is going to be right at home for them. Rather, they are a blended or a single malt scotch person. And finally, we have Red Breast Family Collection. This comes with three different 100 milliliter bottles. So a little bit higher than the other 50 milliliter bottles we've seen. Uh, but this comes with a bottle of Red Breast 12, Red Breast 15, and Red Breast Lestau. Um, probably pronounce that incorrectly, but I tried my best, uh, which is a very exquisite sherry from what I was learning about. Now, this collection I ended up picking up at Target for 20 bucks, and I had to do a little bit of hunting because several Targets I went to either didn't have it or they were completely sold out. So I don't know if it's just one of those things that have sat around and they finally have sold out of. Uh, we tend to see during this time that they push these tasting sets up for holiday times, so that's a possibility. Now, when it comes to taste on here, Red Breast 12 tends to be the great introduction. You're going to pull out some nice, awesome vanilla notes with a little bit of sherry characteristics. So that kind of sweeter dry notes in there of dark fruits uh, and then a little bit of oak where your Red Breast 15 is those same flavors kind of dialed up more. You're going to get a little bit more darker fruits, dark cherry, fig notes. You're going to get those more just luxurious flavorings, sometimes oily and a little bit of maltiness to it. Uh, definitely that oak note because of its age is going to shine a little bit higher. And then your LaSalle is those, those sherry notes dialed up even more. So you're going to get more of those fruity dark notes, but you're still going to get those nice vanilla characteristics. Now, who's this set for? Your first one is going to be the Whiskey Explorer. If they're just getting into this, most of them have heard about Red Breast very popular so they're going to be able to sit down and kind of do some tasting between 12 and 15 and really kind of tell a difference of what those three years did and the sound is different enough on its own to really kind of characterize all three of them together uh your whiskey intermediate to advanced person is another one i'd recommend this for there's a good chance they've had the 12. 12 is super common in the whiskey world the 15 and the sound are a little more uncommon especially because of the a little bit higher pricing on there, so they would really enjoy this. Um, also, your Irish drinker. If you have somebody in your family that loves Irish whiskey, this is going to put them right at home. Maybe they like Jameson or Powers. Those are going to be your more common word, or maybe they just like Redbreast 12. Uh, being able to jump up to the 15 on LaSalle is going to give them some interesting characteristics, but still keep them in that similar wheelhouse of what Irish whiskey is and can be. And I think for the pricing of 20 bucks, I don't think it's a bad deal at all. It definitely saves you from spending $60 on making sure you don't like the 12 or if you do love it. Uh, but being able to try the 15 and the style versions are definitely 100% worth it. Uh, I've actually seen this go online for like Flaviar.com at about $28. So picking up for 20 bucks to try out all three of these is a worthwhile adventure in my, my mind. So next up we have... Flaviar.com's tasting sense. Now, originally I wasn't planning on putting this one on the list, but I decided to at the last moment because I think that it's actually a pretty decent idea for a very specific person. Now these tasting sets price-wise range 
anywhere between $31 to $41, depending on what the set includes. The one I have opened here is the A Tale of Three Whiskeys, and essentially it comes with three 50 milliliter bottles, and it comes with a coaster, plus the little bit of information on each of the bottles. So it came with the, the uh, a Welsh, which is the Pentarium. I'm sure I pronounced that incorrectly. This is their Madeira finished cask, which can run upwards to 60 to $70. The Japanese whiskey, which is Oshini, which is their Sakura cask finished, which can run up to 90 to $100, depending on your market. And then your last one is the Milk and Honey, if I remember right. This is from Israel, and that's just their classic bottling. And it also comes with their little tasting profile sets as well, which is cool. Now, if you happen to sign up on just full disclosure or are interested in Flaviar.com, my link's down below. You'll get a bit of a kickback. I'll get a bit of a kickback. And, well, who can argue with that? But more than just whiskey, they also do uh, sets for rum, tequila, and gin. They're not as in-depth of selections, but they do offer a few different bottlings. Now, who's this set for? Again, this is for your whiskey expert. This is somebody that it wants a challenge. This is somebody that wants to branch out and really try different whiskeys. Again, the Tale of Three Whiskeys, these are three different parts of the world that I'll never get to visit personally, most likely, but that are harder to find whiskeys for me. The Sakura Cask version, I know one place that has this. Uh, the Pandarian, I've only seen this one time in a store. And then the milk and honey, I know of one place. So very uncommon. But the nice thing is I can taste these more exquisite bottles before actually buying them. Uh, you know, to go out and spend $100 on a bottle is kind of a risk, uh, especially for the more expensive brands. You know, like That's a risk to spend that. And even a whiskey expert, they want to do the much as much research as they can before just pulling the trigger and buying a, an unknown bottle to them. And again, the nice thing is they actually give you the little coaster sets to kind of be able to go along with your journey, to be able to try new things, and to overall just give yourself an option for more expensive whiskeys to try before you buy. Again, I don't think it's for very many other people than that, uh, especially you, you have to kind of know what the person's interested in to jump into this realm because this is not cheap, because then you're also gonna be paying shipping on these if you're not a member specifically. And you know, there's there's a lot of risk involved in going something this crazy for somebody. Uh, so it is specifically for that whiskey expert in my mind. So with all that in mind, let's wrap things up. So there you have it, some tasting sets. I think that these can be for a lot of people, but some of them are a little more geared towards a very specific class of whiskey drinker. Uh, if you have any questions about these bottles, let me know down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer it. And if you have any bottles in your area that you're like, is this a good buy? Should I buy this? Ask me down below. By no means am I an expert. I more re recently started my journey on spirits, and so I'm learning just along with a lot of people. But I will do my best to at least maybe kind of point you in a direction uh, or maybe give you an idea if it's a good buy. And overall, I, I, I just love trying new things and love experimenting with these kind of sets because it really does allow you to kind of get an idea before you jump in both feet to some of these more expensive bottles. And with that all in mind, I hope that your last drink of the night or whoever you're buying a gift for is the best one.